Um, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here um, as we uh, once again to come to our community uh, to address the issue of guns in the hands of our children. Um, today we had uh, another unfortunate incident where we uh, removed a gun from the possession of a young child, a third grader, at uh, one of our elementary schools. Uh, so today our community is once again coming forward with a plea to everyone within the sound of our voices to uh, please help us with this. We need every caring adult to tell their friends, tell your neighbors, if you've got a gun and you've got children around, please lock them up. If you've got a gun and you don't have children around, please lock them up, please secure them, and please keep them out of the hands of our young people. Uh, we've seen the devastating consequences that this has had throughout our community, and that's what our leaders are here to talk about today. You'll hear today from uh, Superintendent Dr. Ledrian Roby. You'll hear from our Chief of Staff and Executive Director of Public Safety, Larry Johnson, uh, the Police Chief of Grand Rapids, Eric Winstrom, and the Mayor of our city, Rosalind Bliss. I'll turn things over to the Superintendent. Good evening, everyone, or good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, here we are again, and I will just say that I am frustrated, I'm sad, and I'm angry that this continues to happen. I want our young people in our schools and our families to know that we are we are trying to make sure that our schools are safe. This is um, a repeated occurrence that we have to get a hold of. What I will say is that we are enacting immediately, effective immediately, a backpack ban and that is a drastic step but we think it's a necessary step because we want to ensure the safety of not only our scholars but our staff and our community. I think it's important that I acknowledge that it might cause some inconvenience for families and that is not the intent. This is about safety for young people. This is about safety for our staff. This is about safety for our community. I just want to make sure I, I um, we're putting our young people first and our public safety team as well as the Grand Rapids Police Department is also addressing the issues, the specifics around that. And with that, I will turn it over to Chief of Staff, um, Larry Johnson. Well, thank you, Dr. Roby. And it goes without saying, uh, we, are, we are so thankful for, for our teachers, our, our, our scholars in the buildings that uh, take uh, safety and security uh, very seriously. Uh, this, uh, this morning at about 8.30, 8.39, uh, one of our scholars made a decision uh, to bring a weapon into our schools, a loaded weapon. Now, we've been here before you just over a week ago. We've stood before you. This is a crisis in our community. It's a crisis in this country, but we're more focused on what happens here in Grand Rapids right now. It's, it is not acceptable, and we plead to our parents, our grandparents, aunts and uncles, those who are the caretakers of young people in this community, to begin to search their kids' book bags and check their rooms, particularly elementary kids, our middle school kids, who have access to weapons. Parents need to lock their weapons up secure their weapons, move ammunition away from weapons. We're standing today as a, as a safety plea, and we're gonna continue to all we can do in the Grand Rapids Public Schools to keep our kids safe before we have a tragedy in this community. We have adverted at least two tragedies in the last two weeks. We don't wanna stand before you again. We do not wanna stand before you again. Safety protocols work in our district. They work in all school districts, when adults and scholars take them serious. And in this case, they were taken very serious. But also parents have to play an important role in this because safety extends beyond the school steps. It extends into the home. It extends into our community. And our schools is a microcosm of this community. And if we wanna have safe communities and safe schools, then we must actively work together to make that happen. So our plea and our call is to our parents, it's to our clergy, is to all of our leaders and those that play an important life, uh, important role in the life of kids, that now is the time to step up before we have a tragedy in this community. This is unacceptable. We will not continue to tolerate it. And so we've got to do some things to adjust our safety protocols so that we can keep our scholars safe, keep our staff safe. Again, we thank our staff at Stocking Elementary School for following the safety protocols. We thank our scholars who went to a trusted adult upon noticing a weapon in a book bag immediately. But we also challenge our parents to make sure that they're doing more before that child leaves the home daily. We don't want to be before you again for this matter. 
Thank you for your time, and I'll turn it over to the chief of police. First, I want to thank Dr. Roby, Executive Director Johnson, for the seriousness that they take in caring for our kids here in the city of Grand Rapids. And I want to reiterate something that uh, the Executive Director just said, how close we were to a tragedy. Let me tell you how we avoided that tragedy is children, and I'm talking seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds, did the right thing and informed adults that they trusted about this dangerous circumstance. That's what avoided this. this. Decisions by seven and eight year olds. What we need in the city of Grand Rapids is decision by adults in this city to be just as good as these seven and eight year olds to make these decisions to do the right thing. Here's children, seven and eight year olds, taking an interest when they see there is something dangerous in this backpack that could kill people in this room. I think it's important that the parents, that the mothers and fathers and mother figures and father figures in this town take just as great of an interest, a much greater interest, in looking at that backpack before it leaves the house. And whether your child is eight, whether your child is 18, take an interest in making sure that you take these guns out of your children's hands. I'll turn it over to the mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. I am, uh, I just am here sharing the outrage that all of us feel today, and I'm grateful for all of the work happening here at GRPS to keep students in our schools safe every single day. The city is working closely in partnership with GRPS, but as they said, they cannot do it alone. The city cannot do it alone. We are investing in crime prevention efforts. We're investing in community safety efforts. We are investing in summer camps and youth employment, and we're working closely with the schools. But as the chief said, and as Dr. Roby said, and Mr. Johnson said, we can only do so much. Keeping our kids safe and keeping guns out of the hands of children, that is all of our responsibility. Every single community member, every single parent needs to step up and be a part of this solution. If we are gonna have a safe community and we are committed to being the safest city in the state, we have to work together to do that. And we have to keep guns out of the hands of children, especially if we're gonna prevent a tragedy. So I stand here, the city is here to stand in solidarity with our school system to do everything we can together to keep kids safe, but we cannot do it alone. Dr. Roby. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I do wanna invite um Chief of Staff Johnson to come forward and talk a little bit of, uh, about our uh, community forum that we will be having on the 20th of this month. We want to make sure the community is aware of that. Yeah. So, so prior prior to this incident, uh, you know, we we had made a decision. Uh, we want to hear from our parents. We want to hear from our, our scholars. And so we had invite. We are inviting our community out on Saturday, May 20th, between one and three o'clock at GR, GRPS University. 1400 Fuller Northeast to participate in a in a forum where we can solicit from them their ideals around school safety and security. Uh, we're in it every day, but we need to hear from our parents what they think uh, we should be doing differently, continuing to do or stop doing to keep our scholars safe, to keep this community safe. We're committed to that, uh, and this is be a first of series of summits and forums that we intend to have, uh, not only with our scholars but with our parents, uh, because we want to uh, we want to have the safest school district uh, in the nation. We believe we are we are up there, uh, but we have some tweaking to do because we've had uh, some setbacks here recently. So that's what we plan to do. We'll take some questions. Um, the backpack ban, so that's effective immediately. And how long do you have any idea, or is it just going to go indefinitely until? Right now, we're going to go to the right to the end of the school year. Uh, we want to we want our leadership team and listening to our, our parent, our scholars. Uh, we want to put some more uh, some more meat on the bone, so to speak. We want to talk about it more to see what's the best approach uh, for our kids. And if it means that we have to readjust uh, and rearrange how we bring items into the schools, we're going to do that. Uh, uh, backpacks is a great hiding sp uh, spot uh, for contraband, and we want to remove that those opportunities uh, until we can get our hands around the decisions that young people. Are are making right now. What do you have to say to students and parents who are realizing that there was a second gun brought in within two weeks, one loaded? What do you have to say to the parents and kids who are scared right now? I'm going to say to the parents and in the, in the, in the community that are scared that the system is working. There's trust build up. We teach our young people, if you see a weapon, don't touch a weapon, run and tell an adult. That's what we teach them and that's exactly what they did. 
So we hope that we can calm their fears by knowing our kids are listening, our scholars are listening, our staff is doing the right thing, we're training, we're talking, we're working with law enforcement. Now we throw it back to the parent seat to say, you've got to do what you have to do in your homes by checking under your mattresses, checking dressers, removing the opportunity for a youngster, a child, to get their hands on a, on a gun. So we're trying to calm their fears by letting them know that we want to work with them, continue to work with them, to help keep and give them strategies to keep these weapons out of the hands of these children in this community. As a school district talking to these kids, letting them know bringing a school or a gun to school is wrong? Our, our kids know that it's wrong. We, uh, Dr. Roby and I uh, met a scholar this afternoon that saw the news conference just last week. They understand. They understand, and we know they understand, because they're going to an adult uh, when they see something wrong in the school. See something, say something, they're doing something. So they're going and telling an adult, and they're seeking help from adults, from their peers who make a bad decision. So the message is getting out there, but we've got to get the message out to everyone that attends the Grand Rapids Public Schools and those that impact us in the community. Now, are you treating this uh, student that brought the gun to school the same as you treated the last student who brought a gun to school? We're going to continue with our disciplinary process. We're going to continue to work with families, and then we're going to let the, the legal aspect of this be taken care of with the Kent County Prosecutor's Office, the Police Department, and the Juvenile Authorities. That backpack ban, how's that going to be enforced at the schools? Well, with compassion, right? With much compassion, uh, much consideration as we work with our kids. Many of us are parents, grandparents, we're, we're, we're parents of young ladies, and so we need to consider all those, those sensitive matters and how we can let, uh, let things come into the school. But the main thing is we want to slow the tide right now and we want to keep the backpacks out so we can remove the opportunity for another weapon to be in these schools through a backpack. Is that going to be uh, the band still going to be in place when the next school year starts? Again, we're going to work through that over the summer. Our teams are going to come together. We're going to hear from our scholars. We're going to hear from our parents. And then we're going to make the best decision for the scholars of the Grand Rapids Public Schools. Is there anything else on the table other than a backpack ban at this moment? We have a multitude of uh, security strategies that we're working through. Uh, you know, we're enhancing our cameras. We, we have uh, invested in secured entryways. Uh, we're, we're looking at uh, protective film. There's a multitude of things that you will hear about on May 20th uh, that we're trying to do. And there's some things that we want to hear that our parents think we should try. So we are trying a lot. Uh, uh, just this morning, I was at the Homeland Security Conference, uh, the school track, uh, with many of our school safety uh, professionals from around the state and, and talking about this very thing and prioritizing what we think we need to be doing to keep our schools safe here in Michigan. But I'm more focused on what happens here in Grand Rapids. What's going through your mind? This is the second time you've addressed us in two weeks. What, what emotions are going through you right now? You don't even want to know the emotions right now. I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm upset uh, and I'm passionate about keeping our kids safe. Uh, I wish I can go in every household in the city limits of Grand Rapids and, and help every parent, every gun owner do, uh, do a safety check of their house and secure those weapons. So I can't, I can't, even, uh, I can't even expound on my frustration uh, at this very moment. I'm, 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 I'm happy that we didn't have a tragedy, but I'm frustrated that parents are not listening and we need them to listen and secure these weapons. What kind of weapon was it? You say it's a gun. It's a handgun. Can we talk a little bit about how the gun was, was seen and, and by who and what happened afterwards? The, the handgun was seen um, in a book bag. The book bag was, uh, was dropped in the, in the building. Uh, another scholar realized and picking it up that it was heavier than it should have been and reported that to an instructor who took immediate action, investigated more, and we discovered there was a weapon inside of that book bag. Did this student ever have any prior uh, issues with the school? There, there are no threats and, and nothing, nothing in this particular student's history that would indicate they would bring a weapon to school. Could the parents face charges? That might be a question. Again, that's a question for the prosecutor's office. The police chief may be able to dig more into that. Uh, but personally, I hope they do because we've got to do something to send a message to this community that it's unacceptable. Chief, you want to comment on that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and I, uh, I want to echo what's been said already. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. This is the second time we've been doing this in two weeks. And um, I'll tell you that from um, a week ago, you know, that investigation is ongoing, but uh, we should have information in the next couple of days that, that we'll be delivering to the, to the prosecutor request for prosecution in that case. In, the ca in this case, I do anticipate there'll be criminal charges. Uh, it is an ongoing investigation, but uh, certainly no criminal charges against the eight-year-old. We're talking about a victim here. That child is a victim. And uh, I am certainly thankful that we're not talking about other victims because we're talking about a loaded 
semi-automatic handgun, a bullet in the chamber. If you're familiar with that, that means any child that had picked up that bag that manipulated the trigger, even through the bag, could have fired that handgun. It could have easily killed someone. So uh, that eight-year-old is a victim. I'm just thankful that we're not talking about any other victims today. Do you have any officers in the district uh, inside the buildings? We don't have officers inside the buildings. So uh, GRPS security, we have a very good relationship with them. We're, we're in constant communication. Uh, we did respond to this incident to, to recover the gun and do a, a, an investigation alongside of them. I'm sure you've talked to these students, but have any either of the two said why they brought these guns to school? I'm, I'm not at liberty to say what the what either the eight or seven year old said because of uh, how the juvenile law works. But we have had uh, good discussions with the with the students, the the witness students, uh, the faculty. Everybody's been real cooperative. Everybody understands how serious this is and how it could have been a, a real tragedy averted. And the parents of these. these two that's who. Too, that's who. They? Absolutely. Yeah. That's. I mean, it, I, without getting into specifics. Uh, the questions that we're looking for is number one: Is this gun registered? Number two: Is, is the gun uh, a legal gun? Is there something? Is it a stolen firearm? Perhaps? Is the adult who possessed this gun legally allowed to possess this gun? And then, how did the child have access to the gun? So each one of those has a different element of criminal charges to it, depending on where the investigation leads us. And then, think something as I mentioned uh, last time we spoke is that in a few months from now, this law is going to take effect, that there are laws exactly on point to allowing a, a child access to a handgun, whether loaded or not. And that's going to be a, an additional charge. But I'm very confident that there will be criminal charges in both these incidents regardless. Chief, is that how the, is that how the tide stops and not just flows? We just heard a moment ago we're trying to slow the tide. Is changes to laws and changes to safety, is that how we're going to... Well, I think I think it's going to impact it, but I got to I got to tell you, we we just met like this a week ago. I would think that the press that we had around a seven-year-old walking into a, a school with a gun would have been enough that people would have seen that and be like, "Wow, adults in Grand Rapids, we really have to understand like take gun safety seriously. Lock up your guns. Keep your guns away from children." And the point wasn't wasn't made then. I'm hoping after this, the point is made. But certainly, with enhanced laws, that that will give us a little more, at least from the enforcement action, and that will also send the point across. A couple more questions, and we need to get to uh, Superintendent families. What's going through your mind today? What emotions are going through your mind? Um, lots of emotions. I am not only an educator, I'm also a parent, and I'm a grandparent. And the thought of young people having to experience school this way breaks my heart. Um, and as I was listening, I want to make sure that people understand this is not a zero-sum game for us. Everybody loses. I don't want to stand before you and talk about a young person who's been harmed because we as adults cannot seem to secure our weapons. That bothers me. And so it's not about pointing pit, um, fingers at other people. It's about how do we do this collectively as a community. If we love our children, and I know that we do love our children, we've got to collectively do this work together and have individual as well as group accountability for safety of young people. Is it possible all about metal detectors in, in schools? I mean, is that a real drastic, you know, option? Yep, I think, again, Mr. Jo Johnson can talk a little bit more about some of the mechanisms that we are putting in place, but I want to make sure that everybody understands this. Metal detectors are maybe a deterrent, but that does, that's not going to solve the issue. It is a combination of things. And again, as I said, this is not a zero sum game. And so parents have a responsibility, staff have a responsibility, young people have a responsibility, but most importantly, those who are, who are gun owners, they have the greatest responsibility. If they take the charge of possessing a gun, they need to secure it to make sure it's not getting in the hands of a seven-year-old, an eight-year-old, a 12-year-old because I don't want to ever live with that, that I was not responsible as an adult, that somebody has gotten, was harmed because I didn't secure my weapon. Now on the flip side, how proud are you of these students for, for stepping up? Very off? proud. And I, um, I agree with my colleagues, as they said, it's our young people who have been leading the charge. And I think that's important that the young people are getting the message and saying, this is not safe. I want my school to be safe. And so if the children are leading us, then we as adults, we need to step up and say, I want to make sure that this is a non-issue. And so I am very proud of those young people for seeing something and saying something. All right. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And the backpack is a district wide, not just Correct. Yes, District Y. Of course, you all know if you have questions, you can reach out to me directly. Um, we're kind of still hammering out details around the ban and that sort of thing. So 
um, that's work that's ongoing in time. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. But back tomorrow. Immediately. Yes. Yep. Yep.